Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome. Welcome, welcome to this mental house with me, your host, Khadija. You know what? Y'all, I just want to talk about something. It's a very interesting article from, um, well, uh, uh, a person who I, I hold in high regard. Actually, her name is Elizabeth Lambert. Um, and I knew her when she was a teacher, but let me, um, she's a lawyer now and she seeks to hold Wisconsin school districts accountable for discrimination. Okay. Um, discrimination complaints against public school districts across Wisconsin have popped up more frequently in recent months with five handled by the ACLU in September. The complaints and appeals span the state from Chippewa Falls in the northwest to Burlington and Cedarburg in the southeast and even with I Forward, a statewide online charter school based in Grantsburg. There is a wide range of alleged discrimination against students in protected communities, but all have one thing in common. The name is signature at the bottom. Wisconsin Lambert is a former public school teacher turned Equal Justice Works fellow through a partnership between ACLU of Wisconsin and the Equal Justice Works, um, which is a, a, a national nonprofit based in one. So, um, Elizabeth Lambert is a former public school teacher turned Equal Justice Works again, a fellow through a partnership between ACLU of Wisconsin and the Equal Justice Works, a national Washington, D.C. based, yeah, a nonprofit that focuses on career support for lawyers who specialize in public service. Her two-year fellowship project focused on exposing disparities between Wisconsin public schools began in September and is funded by William Collins Kohler Foundation and an anonymous donor. I think of it as disrupting the very front of the prison school to prison pipeline, she said. I'm trying to get out in front of those processes that alienate kids from schools and drive them into other oppressive systems. The ACLU of Wisconsin has heard alleged discrimination complaints against public school districts from parents and groups consistently over the years. Some they were able to take on, others they weren't because they lacked capacity. We have brought a couple of administrative complaints that generally we were able to resolve the complaint the, but the complaint uh, process was not as widely known um, said Larry Dupius legal director of the ACLU of Wisconsin okay anyway uh, Larry knew Larry Dupius, legal director of the ACLU of Wisconsin. We knew that there were concerns about this in districts around the state. Some districts seemed to be handling them reasonably be well, while others not so much. The process was variable and ambiguous from place to place. So we were starting over each time, learning how each school district handles complaints. In the past decade, the Wisconsin Department of Public Education has resolved 14 appeals related to discrimination complaints regarding race or sexual orientation through its pupil non-discrimination program. A case can be elevated to DPI after a complaint is filed against a school district and the district administration determines the complaint is unfounded or that the district is in compliance with state statute. The compliant, the complainant can then appeal the district's decision to the state agency. 
Um, the extent to which these processes are utilized is the way is way out of proportion with the scale of the problem in this state. It is clear that there are folks all around the state who need someone looking at their school district and making sure it's complying with its obligations of providing equal educational opportunities. The first of Lambert's cases to garner attention focused on a discrimination complaint filed by Darnisha Garbade, a parent of two former students against the Burlington School District. The alleged uh, district failed to address a racially hostile environment for students of color. The district found no wrongdoing, which prompted Lambert to file an appeal to the state agency on behalf of Garbay. DPI upheld the complaint in April after an investigation led by an aid, the agency uncovered at least 19 incidences of racial harassment in school districts. Including slurs used against students of color by their peers between 2016 and 2020. Um, the state agency ordered the school district to submit a corrective action plan that includes specific steps to prevent discrimination in discipline, address the racial hostile environment, review its practices for reported discrimination complaints, and bring its policies up to compliance with state codes. According to a report by Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, DPI is responsible for ensuring that the district follows through. Publicity surrounding the Burlington case led up um, to um, just a lot. <laughs> An absolute lot. So, um, it's, uh, uh, it, instead of filling out complaints herself, Lambert conducts outreach to parents and advocacy groups across the state and is working with parents in groups of 25 districts to teach them how to file discrimination complaints. A number of concerns she's heard revolve around students of color or those who identify as LGBTQ who were allegedly disproportionately disciplined or harassed by peers while the school failed to intervene. When I get these phone calls, I try to set up a training um, opportunity where I meet with folks and teach them about their district's complaint process, research the policies together, Learn how the district handled these kind of complaints, she said. And then I'm more like a coach to them. I try to just guide the process. Lambert says she's ready to help evaluate complaints through the appeals process to the state agency on behalf of groups she's coached if needed. Lambert, a parent of two children, went to law school at age 32 after teaching high school uh, English in a public school in a district outside of Milwaukee. I became very aware that my students of color were having a very different experience in high school than my white students were, she said. Those disparities were apparent in how discipline was applied and what kinds of academic opportunities we opportunities were available to these students. Honors and accelerated classes were overwhelmingly populated by whites and regular classes were disproportionately, she said, covered by black. There are a lot of internal segregation throughout, uh, through ability tracking, she said. There were differences in class sizes and differences in representation of special education uh, students, just 
of just a very different quality of experience for kids. Lambert says she repeatedly found herself being an advocate for students with protected status and would get pushback from the administration. That reoccurring pushback prompted her to leave teaching for law school to figure out how to be more effective and how to be a better advocate for students. Her goal through fellowship is to lessen the adversarial tensions between families and their school districts by educating the parents on how to navigate through the complaint process. She hopes to normalize the process to a point where districts view complaints as opportunities to grow and better support their students rather than a battle. We're talking about legal duties and violations of statutes when we're talking about this stuff. And that can be very scary to leaders and people of in positions of power, she said. It would be great to have people using this process a lot to the extent where districts learn to take, the res uh, take this seriously and not def get so defensive and really adopt it and that a policies that collaborate posture with the families that are raising these issues. Absolutely. So kudos. Kudos to you. Um, much respect. Always have respect for you. And now I have even more. So, uh, Shout out to you. Um, and I'm hoping that more people um, big up people like you and the work that you do, uh, Elizabeth, in terms of bringing justice to some of these cases and some of these young people who are being set behind the eight ball before before they even get started. Thank you for being a warrior for justice to bring some of these things to the forefront. So, I really wanted to bring that article out because, you know, it's really important that we um, have allies and people that um, fight against um, an oppressive system that permeates and that affects us in all areas of our lives and especially education so with that being said if you like what you hear what y'all think and what y'all think about elizabeth's work um you think she should just back off or do you think that because she's a, a white sister that she cannot effectively uh, deal with these issues or do you think that she's got a this is a matter and an issue of all hands on deck. And stand up and be counted. All right. Leave your comment below and let me know, family. And I'll see you in the next video.